So the Nikon P900 was a super popular bridge camera with its 24 to 2000 mm zoom lens. It was great for astrophotographers, sports photographers, as well as wildlife photographers. Today, we've got the brand new Nikon P1000, which has a huge 24 to 3000 mm zoom lens. And I'm in the middle of the street just talking to myself, looking quite weird, so let's just take this camera for a spin. That is sick. I don't know in what scenario I would ever use a lens with 3000 mil. Oh my God, I'm doing 1000 handheld. Hold on. F8 at 1000 mil. <laughs> oh my God, every time I'm laughing, the camera shakes. <laughs> That's amazing. You see that hotel CBD sign over there? Watch this. I have lost it. Wait. Wait. All right. I'm about to take a shot at 3000 mil handheld. And I think I got it. I can definitely not do that on a DSLR setup. Also, everyone's giving me weird looks. This, this lens is definitely not the most discreet lens because it does extend a ridiculous amount. But it's incredible, the actual image stabilization, so it's got like a new dual optic VR system. And honestly, normally you can't shoot at a 2,800 mil handheld. But for some reason, I came with this camera. Impressive. I discovered that my last couple photos at 3,000 mil were a bit out of focus, so. I'm gonna makeshift a tripod. This is ridiculous, there's so much zoom. So, uh, I just took a photo of a light bulb, a single light bulb in Centerpoint Tower, which is up there. Oh my god. <laughs> So my first impressions on the P1000 design and construction is significantly bigger than the P900. Have you seen how big this is? This thing is definitely not discreet. So if you're going to be using it to travel or taking it around, just be aware when using it around people because they might think you're sniping mad photos of them because this thing is ginormous. On the plus side, the grip on it feels amazing and the construction just feels like a DSLR from Nikon, so it feels quite solid. On the top, you've got a brand new upgraded 2.3 million dot EVF, which looks fantastic and definitely a big step up from the P900's EVF. At the back, you've got the same 3.2 inch tilt touchscreen that the P900 would have had. At the bottom, you've got an ENEL20 battery as well as a SD card slot. At the back of the camera, you've got your typical dial controls. You've got a rotating reel to adjust your aperture. Um, at the top, you've got the rotating wheel for your shutter speed. You've got a record button, a simple mode dial to go through all your functions. On the left-hand side of the camera, you've got a mic port, a HDMI port, a USB port that you can use for charging, as well as a remote port. The whole form factor of the camera though, although it is quite long and large, it weighs about 1.4 kilograms, which is typically a DSLR with a semi-telephoto lens approximately so it turns out the weight it's not too bad and finally it's got a badass pop-up flash hell yeah so in terms of the autofocus performance for photography it's quite decent um, it just employs a standard contrast um, AF detection system and it works okay um, in an environment like this where there's a lot of uh, varying lights and different colors, the autofocus system works pretty well. The only time we see a kind of struggles is in video and you would have saw that in our intro when we were filming, especially when you zoom past 
a certain point in the telephoto range that the AF does dip a bit and does look a bit laggy at times, but overall, for this caliber of lens, it does okay. It is a f2.8 to f8, so keep in mind, if you're gonna be using the longer end of the lens, that you're not gonna get the same lighting performance as you do when you're shooting at its widest at 24 mil. Overall though, this thing's a beast. <laughs> So now I'm just gonna go over the key features of the Nikon P1000. So firstly, it's got a one over 2.3 inch 16 megapixel sensor combined with an X-Speed processor. This allows you to shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second, have a native ISO range of 100 to 6400, and continuous shooting speeds up to seven frames per second. As I said before, it employs a contrast autofocus point system on the inside, and most importantly, the best feature of this is that it has a 24 to 3000 mil zoom, which covers you for a wide landscape all the way up to super, super telephoto ranges and enough for you to shoot decent photos of the moon. It's got a aperture range of f2.8 to f8, meaning you're gonna get flexible-ish control over your lighting conditions and depth of field. It employs a dual optical VR system to stabilize this lens because normally if you're shooting at 3000 mil you'll definitely need a tripod which is something we do recommend when using this camera however it can be shot handheld with its advanced image stabilization system and finally it's got snap bridge inside the camera so if you connect the camera to your smart device you can transfer photos and videos instantly and share them with your loved ones. One thing that's really annoying actually about this camera at times is when when you adjust aperture using this wheel, the actual um, D-pad function, so like the exposure compensation, the self timer and stuff, it's really sensitive. So if you punch your thumb in just a bit too hard, instead of it adjusting aperture, you're gonna end up adjusting exposure compensation or something else. So keep that in mind when you're using the camera. So as if a 24 to 3000 mil wasn't enough, it has a close up macro mode where you can focus up to one centimeter away from your subject, which is pretty neat. Just really shows you how versatile this camera is. I just did the damn exposure compensation thing again. <laughs> So in terms of the performance of the P1000, it's pretty decent considering how much zoom you do get. Now, because you do get too much zoom, I definitely recommend carrying a monopod or a tripod and it helps a lot with focusing. In terms of the actual focusing performance and sharpness of the photos, I've noticed that it works really well under 1200 mils. A bit above that, it does tend to struggle, but that is also because I shake a lot. In terms of the actual aperture performance, f2.8 is pretty decent, but if you are going to be using this in poorer lighting conditions, then the more you zoom, it's gonna be a bit more difficult to use. One thing I have noticed that goes down really quick is the battery life. It uses that ENEL 20 battery, so you only get really, I'd say just over 200 shots, and then it'll go flat. So I definitely recommend bringing a spare battery if you're gonna go out with the camera. And secondly, although yes, I did say Weight-wise, it's not too bad, but I am feeling it a bit. So for people who are looking for a compact camera that's got an all-in-one zoom, this is pretty big compared to other cameras on the market. So definitely hit up the gym before you grab one of these. So one cool thing I've noticed about the P1000, as with most bridge cameras, you've got two zoom functions. The top one is a really quick one, and the front one, go slower so you get a more precise kind of speed so you can focus and frame a lot easier but if you really need to rush and quickly get your shot then the top zoom little dial thing works pretty well for that. One of the things that concerned me most about the P1000 was how the image quality was going to play out with the bigger lens. For a sensor of this size, the P1000 still produces high quality imagery, 
similar to the P900, which is fantastic. The flexibility of the lens really shows in these images, and the fact that it is able to capture this amount of detail is fantastic. Of course, optically, the lens is nothing like the optics from the F-mount system, as you will be suffering a bit of chromatic aberration and distortion too. But remember, this lens is an all-in-one lens, and it's the only bridge camera with a 125 times optical zoom, and it does a fairly decent job at being an all-in-one too. So my final thoughts, if you are a beginner or enthusiast, bird watcher, wildlife person, astrophotographer, sports photographer, then the P1000 is a perfect camera for you, especially if you are looking for a camera with a kind of similar form factor to a DSLR, but are not looking to invest in buying a whole heap of lenses. The price for a P1000 is quite reasonable with just being over 1000 Australian meaning that you're going to save a lot of money on buying a body and extra lenses to get this kind of focal length. If you're looking for something that replicates the performance of a DSLR in speed, image quality, as well as burst and battery life, then the P1000 won't deliver that for you. However, it provides an all-in-one solution for people who are just looking to casually do a bit of landscape, do a lot of telephoto, shoot the moon a couple times, and go travel with a camera that literally does it all. If you have any questions on the P1000, pop them in the comments below. Follow us on our Facebook, Instagram and our blog, which links to those are in our description to keep up to date with what we do in store and our events as well. And finally, if you liked our video, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next update as we post every Tuesday and Thursday. See you later. It's not zooming. It is now zooming. <laughs>